Hello, I'm Jacob from Intrepid Protoworks, and today we are going to talk about calculating confidence intervals. To this, we will go ahead and define several starter functions, just go and speed through these. We'll define a function, get our mean, our sample standard deviation, and our sample standard error. Once we have those, we'll continue on into calculating our critical t value. If you want a more detailed breakdown on these first three functions, make sure to reference some of our previous videos. So our confidence interval today will rely on using the t distribution that we calculated in our previous video. So go ahead and define git critical t and we'll take our alpha and our sample. You can also just pass through the degrees of freedom as that's all we're using the sample for. So we'll get our sample size and we'll do sample size minus one to get our degrees of freedom. Then we'll just go ahead and make an empty variable for our critical t and we'll go ahead and open up our t table. We'll speed through opening this up. We've done this lots of times before with our Z table and our data. Then we'll go ahead and make a loop. We'll go through each row. And then we will check if the degrees of freedom matches the degrees of freedom of our sample. And then we will also check if the uh, alpha we selected matches a given probability. We'll go ahead and find the closest match in our T table. And then it will go ahead and find the t value associated with that and return that t value as our critical t. We're going to go ahead and do alpha divided by two just because we're doing a two tailed confidence interval, which is the most common. We're also subtracting our alpha divided by two from one to give us the upper end positive critical t value. Once we find a match, we'll go ahead and break out a loop and that will give us our critical t. I'm going to toss in import CSV real quick because we forgot to earlier. Next, we are going to go ahead and define our function to get our confidence intervals. This function will take our sample and it will take our alpha that we define. Then inside of the function, we will get our mean of our sample and we will get our standard error. Then we will also get the critical T associated with the alpha value we have selected. Once we have those, we can calculate our lower and upper bounds for our confidence interval. To get our lower confidence interval, we will take our mean and then subtract from it our critical t value multiplied by our standard error. Then to get our upper bound confidence interval, we will take our mean and then add our critical t value multiplied by our standard error. And we'll go ahead and print out our critical t just so we can see what it is and make sure that we're not doing something wrong. With all this in place, we are ready to actually calculate our confidence intervals for a sample. Now, while we're bringing in our sample data, let's take a brief moment now that we've talked about how to calculate the confidence interval to talk about uh, what a confidence interval is. So our confidence interval is our guess within a certain degree of confidence that our population mean is somewhere within this range. So if our confidence interval was from say 10 to 15, we would be saying that we're reasonably confident to, you know, 95% confidence that our population mean is somewhere in here. Going back to the data that we're bringing in, this is the same that we've done in previous videos. We are bringing in a data set from IPUMS and we are filtering out our header. We're looking at positive and unambiguous incomes. We are looking at incomes of people over the age of 18. If you want more details on this, they've done a lot of videos on bringing this data in. At the end, we are just left with a series of integer values that represent about 2.2 million different incomes. Next, we'll go ahead and import the random module. And with it, we will go ahead and define a random sample from our income data. We'll go ahead and just make this 100 for now. We can play around with that size later. And then we'll go ahead and define our alpha as 0.05. Now we'll go ahead and get our confidence intervals. We'll do lower and upper, and then we'll do get uh, CI, income sample, and alpha. And then we'll go ahead and print those out. So we can then go ahead and save and run. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this a few times and uh, play around with the sample size a little bit. 
So this will take a little while to run because each time we're sifting through and adding in 2.2 million data points to our overall data set. But uh, we can see that there is some variance here. And this is going to vary a lot more if we increase our sample size. And we will also see that our critical T value is higher as well. If we look back, we can actually see that things work pretty well even at a sample size of 10. I don't really advise a sample size that small unless you need to. Sometimes there's actually really good reasons to do a sample size that small. Uh, however, bigger is typically better. Now, next time we'll go ahead and talk about graphing uh, a bar chart with confidence intervals using matplotlib. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe.